Um, Hi. <laughs> my question is also for the aspiring authors in the room. Mm -hmm. I love everything of yours that I've read, which admittedly, I'm probably a minority in the room. I've only read like two of your books, but I want to read more of them. Well, you got some. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I, you have brilliant pacing, your characters are really in depth, and I'm just wondering, because I know a lot of writers find they hit a slump. They can't go anywhere with the character, they can't go anywhere with the storyline, they don't know what to do, and they don't, they're paralyzed by this blank page or something. I'm just wondering, what do you do to power through a writer's block or a slump? Well, I don't believe in writer's block. I'm a commercial fiction writer. Um, and commercial fiction writers write to a deadline. And if you don't finish, you don't get paid. Uh, and I'm very mindful of being paid. Um, <laughs> so uh, I try very hard to stay on my deadlines. And, and pretty much I know what, they can, what I can do. But um, I, think that, uh, I think there's two things about writer's block. Let's say you do get a writer's block, which occasionally you do. Uh, I always say it's one of two things. One is that uh, you are uh, spending too much time in your garret, attic, whatever, working, and not enough time doing something else. You know, take a break. Walk away from your writing for a few days and don't look at it and come back. Things will usually be better. Usually, Judine comes up and says, why don't you come down and meet the kids? It's been six months, for God's sake. <laughs> Um, and the other thing is, is that it sometimes that's your instinct, your writer's instinct, telling you you've taken a wrong turn, and that you've written yourself to a place where you really don't want to be, and now you're trying to figure out how to go forward. When what you should do is back up and see maybe where you should take a different path. And I think frequently that that helps get you through. But the larger thing I think that writers need to remember is you need to read, 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 and pay attention to what you're reading. You know, if you're writing in a, not just in your field, but just in general, look at what other writers are doing stylistically. Look at what makes things work. Now, I don't happen to be a huge uh, vampire person, but I read Twilight, because I wanted to know why is she selling all these books. And if you read that book, you can figure it out pretty fast. And this is true for any number of different kinds of, of fiction. And even if you don't like what you hear about it, or it doesn't seem like something that you would be interested in. When somebody sells five million books, you should read it, just to see what's in there that's making a difference. It doesn't always come clear to me, uh, but uh, most of the time you can figure it out. So those are things that usually will help you with that. And I think the other thing is, is that the longer you work at this, the better you get at it. Unless you're, you're not a student, but if you're paying attention, um, it becomes something that you're more comfortable with. And you begin to see, you begin to learn some of the tricks. You begin to see certain uh, uh, paths that you can follow that make things work, how to position things, when to come in with certain parts of the story. It all becomes much easier. I mean, I will do twice as much work in half the time as I did like 20 years ago or something like that. And that's, that's, the, that's the carrot at the end of the stick, I guess. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm sort of at the opposite end of the spectrum. I've read every Shannara book, and um, now I hear a rumor that you might be uh, bringing about a conclusion to the series. Without giving anything away, obviously, at this point, is there anything you can uh, tell us about how you might bring everything to a, a wrap-up? Well, since I've been talking about it all through Canada, I guess I may as well talk about it a little more. I am going to conclude the series. Um, why am I doing this? Well because I'm getting older. And because if I die, Robert, maybe Robert Sawyer would finish it. <laughs> Robert, are you here? Or maybe Brandon Sanderson would finish it. We actually had him last year. But it would be somebody besides me, and I'm not real fond of that idea. So I think really I should finish it, and then if somebody wants to write spin-offs or whatever, then I don't care about that so much. But I've had a, a, a conclusion in mind for uh, some years now, and um, I just sort of reached a point where I feel like I've given this series everything I can give to it. So I am uh, now, uh, I think Witch Wraith is the latest book out here. Um, I am writing a, a lead up trilogy right now. Two books are done and will both be out next year. One will be out in 15 
And then I will write the final three books that will wrap the whole thing up. And they will be, you know, big, big books with lots of words. <laughs> <laughs> and exorbitant prices. Uh, <laughs> but I, I do kind of feel like I need to, uh, to uh, bring it to a conclusion. I have a lot of other projects I want to work on. Um, I've been secretly working on a series of new books. Um, in, in the unrelated to anything I've done before. I feel kind of strongly that it's time to, artistically, for me to go in another direction. Um, not, I'm not saying I'm gonna write romance or anything like that, <laughs> but I am saying I need to do something in fantasy and speculative fiction, uh, futuristic fiction that is not uh, connected to what I've been doing. Um, uh, before uh, I, I start to go crazy here, uh, which is happening. So that's what I'm going to be doing, and um, I am going to finish it, yes, I'm going to wrap it up. So you, you, you just mentioned how you feel you've done almost all you could with this series. We said, you said it was one of the reasons why you're wrapping it up. How, I guess the, my question I'm asking is, you are, I think, last count, over 30 books in the series. How did you keep finding new stuff to, be, to bring into it to, uh, you know, to make it worth more of these books? And, well, that's a good point, and uh, it's worth talking about it for just a minute because uh, I understood uh, early on that there's a real danger that you do one book, uh, especially if you're a new writer with, you know, no real, no real training and no uh, real experience and, and really no knowledge about writing books, fiction and so forth, beyond what you've gotten out of reading other books, uh, that you will write one book and then you'll tank because you won't know what else to do. Uh, or you won't be able to carry it beyond that. And I never set out to be a writer who only did one book. I set out to be a writer as a career, and I was determined to find a way to make that happen. So uh, I gave a lot of time and effort and thought to how that would work, and one of the things I decided was that you can't write about the same characters for 12 books. <laughs> any rate, uh, so I decided I would write about, uh, I would write generational sagas uh, about um, families in which various characters crop up in different periods of time over the history of the Four Lands, and I would develop uh, my stories that way. And I felt like each time I went into a new uh, era, as it were, I could reinvent things, uh, not only the characters and the situations, but the history of the land, um, and that would make it fresh for me, um, and I wouldn't feel stale. Uh, I wouldn't be burned out, uh, and that pretty much worked out. Uh, being able to change things around uh, from one grouping of books to the next has helped tremendously. Um, and the other thing is, is that uh, I, I knew early on too, and especially after the first three Shannara books, I thought, I cannot write another one of these books. I've been on it for 15 years, that's for crying out loud enough. Uh, so uh, what I did was I, I went to Lester and said, I, I need something else, you know, and then he gave me this whole stick and carrot thing with Magic Kingdom for sale, and I ended up writing Magic Kingdom, and that took me away for three books, and by the time I was done there, I was ready to go back into Shannara and do something else. And I think you, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's not a boredom thing, but it's a, it's a change of life thing, and um, I'm very big on making changes in your life on a regular basis, uh, and that's certainly true about your art, and it's also very true about the fact that you need to challenge yourself as a writer. You, you, I mean, you could just, I could just write Shannara books forever. Everybody would be happy with that, <laughs> at least until, you know, I quit writing them halfway decently, but as, as, a, as an artist, you, if you just do that, um, you're cheating yourself, and you need to keep challenging yourself in some way in order to uh, stay interesting and topical. That's my theory. Decent theory. I can't yeah. argue with that one. No. Also, there's the whole, you've published a lot more than I have, so I can't argue that period. <laughs> well, you have your first book out today. This man just published his first book, came out today. <laughs> What's the title? I don't even know the title. Uh, it's called Never Been to Mars. Never Been to Mars. How many of you have ever been to Mars? No. <laughs> right. Actually, I would, would like to ask you about the Landover series. Yeah. Now, you, um, <laughs> you did the last one, uh, A Witch's Brew, in 95. What made you want to come back to it almost, what, 14 years later? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, the people who like Magic Kingdom like Magic Kingdom. And uh, they like Magic Kim Kingdom better than they like Shannara, frequently. Um, so uh, after a while of hearing from people who saying, we like your Shannara books, but are you ever going to write anything more in Magic Kingdom? 
Um, and I was struggling with that because I didn't really have a story I was happy with. Uh, I just decided, well, you know, I really should do this. And so that's when I, when I uh, decided to do uh, Princess of Landover, which is the next generation, essentially, of what's going on there. Um, so, and, you know, and there was the movie. Do so you have a question there? You asked most of it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's fine. Um, so, Landover wasn't your creation, it was Lester's, and he asked you to do it? No, no, no. Yeah, that would be easy. <laughs> Not Lester, no. He would never do anything like that. What he does is he says, he does this. He says, I said, I have to write something different. I, I'm really, I can't do another Shannon book right away. I just, I says, okay, fine. Um, he says, well, I'll, I, I can think about it. He says, uh, yeah, there's one idea that's pretty good. He says, but it's not for you. And I said, well, what is it? And he says, no, no, it's just not for you. So I said, well, just tell me what it is. You know, then he goes, no, no, I don't think I should tell you about it because then you might get interested. I said, just tell me what it is. So he said, okay, there's this guy, um, and he is unhappy with his life. Uh, and he gets this Christmas catalog, one of those big ones, like the big... Uh, department store ones with the, with the high-end gifts. And in there is an advertisement for a Magic Kingdom, which he can buy for, you know, whatever, $1 million. And, uh, he, uh, and he decides uh, that he's going to take a flyer on this because he's so unhappy with his life. Uh, and he, he buys the Magic Kingdom, and it turns out it's real, but it's not what he thought it was going to be. It's something else. I said, well, I can work with this. And he said, I don't know. I said, no, no, really, let me, let me take, it, take it and see if I can, can run with it. He said, all right, I'll tell you what, I'll give it to you for a year. If you write the book, you keep the idea. If you don't write the book, I get the idea back. I said, okay, fine. And I remember, because uh, at the time, uh, well, I won't even tell you what was going on otherwise, but I will tell you that at the time, I flew back, and as I was flying back on the plane, I thought, well, who is this guy? And what's his problem that he would be so desperate? And I thought, well, I know. He's a lawyer. <laughs> He's a lawyer, and he, he, his life is, is really bad, and it's bad for a whole bunch of reasons, because he would have to be very desperate to take this kind of a gamble. Um, so I went home, and Lester told me later, he says, well, I thought you were going to write a Piers Anthony kind of book. He said, but instead, you wrote something that's got some darkness to it, as well as the humor that's in there. I said, well, you know me, I don't write anything that hasn't got some darkness to it, so... Uh, but I liked it enough, and he liked it enough, that uh, he let me keep the idea and go on with the series from there. So that's how it happened. So I think your website alludes to another Landover or the last Landover. Is that true? Uh, another Landover? You mean coming up? Yeah. As soon as they make the movie. Can we talk about the movie? <laughs> it's like drunk, pulling teeth, I'm telling you. <laughs> Dang. Okay, to be honest, I thought I'd missed it and I didn't want to admit that. I, I'm not going to pay you people anything more. I've had it. <laughs> this is just not working. All right, so here's the deal on the movie. The movie was, <laughs> is with Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers has had it for quite some time, and they had a screenwriter who wrote a very bad screenplay who changed the story after about page 20. So that went out the window, and we started over. But because early on uh, an actor named Steve Carell had attached himself to the project, it had some weight, and nobody was going to move around. And I really liked the idea of Carell as uh, playing uh, Ben Holiday. No, and, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know how many Carell movies you've seen, but if you've seen the right ones, he's right for it. Uh, seeking a friend for the end of the world. Oh, that was brilliant. Uh, really. Uh, I, I think he's, he is the right guy. But at any rate, um, uh, th they hung in there for this to get a new writer. And we now have a new writer who's uh, actually got experience with uh, fantasy uh, books and screenplays both. And he's working on the screenplay, which is supposed to be done actually this month sometime. And uh, if that happens, then it will go forward. Otherwise, I suppose it will go the way that it's gone before, which is they'll lose interest. Thank you. If there is another Landover book also coming? If there's a movie, you can bet I'll write that book pretty fast. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. This is, has to be one of the most honest Q and A's I've ever done. Well, why be? Well, you know, why kid about it? I, I, if I had a great story in mind, uh, actually, if you've read Princess of Landover, then you know if you got to the end of the book um, that there's a suggestion of what the next book is going to be. So I don't even have to tell you. 
uh, uh, something about it anyway. So. <clears throat> I'll call 